morning, this is Lucas from SS Humanities. Hey Lucas, this is Monica, I'm in Ancona and I'm ready to board the ship. Sure, so um, at the moment the vessel is just outside um, of the port of Ancona and um, we have the pilot on board to navigate the ship uh, into the harbor now. Fantastic, so I'll start heading to the port. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, bye thank you. Bye. I have lived on Humanity One for 11 days. The rescue ship of the German NGO SOS Humanity has a mission, saving lives in the Mediterranean Sea. As record numbers of migrants attempt to reach European shores, I've been invited on board to tell the story of a rescue from the inside. The stories of those who make it happen and those who flee. Basically, a safety tour is to provide you like all the information that you need to keep safe on board and also how to react in case that something happened. From day one on board, I'm thrown into intensive training. The crew had already been at sea for two weeks and I had to catch up. My first trainer, 25-year-old Mexican second mate, Carolina, is a professional crew member. It's a box of survival equipment. But one third of my shipmates are volunteers and like me, they quickly need to know every corner of this 60 meter long vessel. We are not just shown how to stay safe on the ship. No matter what's your role on board, everybody, even the journalist, must be prepared to save a life. The main thing I want you to learn from today is good quality, uninterrupted, chest compressions. How many times is that? 30 times, I believe. 30 times. Yeah. An Australian doctor, an Austrian paramedic and an American midwife are part of the medical team on board. They are all volunteers. There are 13 nationalities of highly skilled professionals on board, organized into four teams, the medical, the maritime, the communications and the care team. The latter make sure that survivors aboard are assisted and protected. È dal 2015 che viaggio fra vari confini come volontari all'inizio. Dopo l'esperienza di vari anni in Grecia, al confine con la Turchia, ho sentito il bisogno di capire un po' meglio anche il confine del Mediterraneo centrale. E come antropologa ritengo che sia veramente importante prendersi cura di queste persone in modo concreto. The first person I get to know well is Anne. She's always had my back. There might be my roommate inside. Hello, Hello. Monica. Hello, Anne. So, Anne is from Germany and she is our cultural mediator on board. Can you tell us what it is about? So a cultural mediator is mostly involved in all situations where the crew would need translations or also in general for communication um, between the crew and the rescued people, but also between uh, the survivors themselves. Humanity One would reach the search and rescue area south of Malta in four days. From the first day, we followed a tight schedule that would be strictly repeated but still, every day on this journey couldn't have been more different. Breakfast at around 7 with a morning meeting at 8 is how the day starts on our journey to the search and rescue area. That's when we learn what's planned for the day. We are about to go into the area of operations again. Um, so today is really the last full day where we can have different jobs done um, to do the life jackets um, back into the bags. Humanity One is heading southwest of Malta in an area not currently covered by other rescue ships. It can be called to intervene upon a notice from national or international authorities or information provided by a well-known network of NGOs. Yeah. 
ahead of what's known as a state of readiness when the ship alerts authorities that it is ready for rescue, preparation activities speed up. Là, on se prépare pour la seconde patrouille. Donc, on est en train de réarmer tous les bateaux de secours. Stamattina sono lavori un po' più fisici perché stiamo preparando tutte le stazioni diciamo, di ricerca e soccorso che abbiamo a bordo della nave, quindi tutti gli equipaggiamenti che ci servono per eventuali operazioni in zona di ricerca e soccorso. Viviana è la head of search and rescue operations. She decides how to plan the rescue, how to approach the boat in distress and what equipment to employ. She is a seafarer and specializes in human rights at sea. Io sono, sono siciliana quindi, e sono una persona che sono veramente nata e cresciuta a mare. Inizialmente lavoravo con, uh, i, con i rifugiati richiedenti asilo sui campi. Mi dava tanta rabbia uh, il fatto che questa tragedia umanitaria si stesse verificando proprio davanti ai miei occhi. Quindi questa è stata la spinta iniziale. There's always a reward on board for the hard work. Tonight, it's the surprise celebration for the ship's first birthday with SOS Humanity. Five days into our journey, we wake up, navigating across the deadliest migration route towards Europe, the central Mediterranean route. Humanity One entered the search and rescue area at night. The mission is now in a new phase. Every crew member participates in the lookout. We are looking for like anything unusual, like little tiny spots uh, on the horizon or um, like anything shiny. Raiders cannot identify little boats, and many of the rescues are still triggered by lookouts. Since 2014, over 22,000 people have died or gone missing trying to cross these waters, stretching from North Africa to Italy and Malta. This year, departures from Tunisia went up sixfold compared to 2022. Arrivals in Italy have skyrocketed, but more people are also dying. Since the beginning of the year, there has been already more than 2,000 people drowning in the Mediterranean Sea or that went missing, which is a number that we have not seen since 2017. Every week, 11 children drown while trying to cross the central Mediterranean Sea. SUS Humanity says there's a desperate need for an effective European program for search and rescue in the central Mediterranean Sea. NGOs fill this gap the best they can. So it shouldn't be a question like why we need those uh, NGO ships, it should be a question how can we bring as many ships as possible into the area. But this is not happening and rescue operations in the central Mediterranean suffered yet another blow in January. The Italian government imposed a new code of conduct on NGOs. Civil rescue ships are fined or detained if they carry out more than one rescue at a time and they are often assigned a distant port of safety for disembarkation. NGO ships are sent far north to northern Italy, sometimes to ports 1,400, 1,600 kilometers away, um, which keeps us out of the area of operation for days on end, which doesn't make any sense because we know from the Italian Coast Guard that they are overwhelmed. We know that there are numbers of departures rising. Um, so why are we kept away from the area of operation where we could help as a well-equipped rescue ship? 
The hours go by. The team is ready, but nothing happens. Anything? No ships, no other ships, no fishing gear. Ah, one or two birds, that's all. <laughs> the first day of lookout ends with no rescue and a growing frustration among the crew, worried that the mission might end without a rescue. Small wooden boats keep appearing on the horizon on our second day of lookout. There is something sinister about it. They are all empty, abandoned to the elements. It can be that the boats were intercepted and that the people were forced back into the country where they tried to flee from. Um, it can also happen, of course, that a boat has capsized and that people vanished and so we don't know in the end what happened. Humanity One keeps on navigating international waters near the Tunisian coast for the whole day. There are signs suggesting grim scenarios all around, but no boats in distress. The crew is increasingly convinced there won't be any rescue. I participate in the rescue on one condition, not showing the faces of the migrants for issues of privacy and protection. Hello. You speak English? Arabic. Arabic. Okay, very good, my friend. Sit down. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, my friend, sit down, everybody. Sit down, okay? Sit down, please. All right. Very good. Okay, you come. Wait, sit down here. from above, right? Uh, from above, uh, especially from the airplane that uh, do search and rescue. They know that it was rescued by us and it was not an interception. Inside there is high risk uh, to inhale fuel and suffocation and also the risk uh, that they take water so they can throw us inside. Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens to find dead bodies inside the low deck. What really hit me most were these these looks the of, of the people we met. They were really scared. Um, so yeah, I think I need some time to go through the whole thing. There are 57 survivors on board, all men, mainly from Bangladesh. The others are from Syria, Morocco and Egypt. They left from Libya the night before the rescue. 
As soon as they arrived on board, they had medical checks, food, showers, new clothes and above all, rest. They were exhausted. They'd been in the sun a lot, so were suffering quite a bit from the dehydration and minor heat illnesses. But they um, are bouncing back beautifully. For most of them, the scars are invisible. Some have been detained in Libya. They have feared death. Some have lost family and friends. They are still vulnerable. Youssef, this is not his real name, has tried to reach Italy many times. فكرت أنا وعائلتي صغيرا هاجروا إلى إيطاليا هاجرنا إلى إيطاليا فقارب طوله 8 أو 9 متر شوية بيننا سكاتلا ليبيا جاية ميليشيات آه يجيوا ما يرحموش يجيوا يضربوا لك القارب يردك الليبيا ويدك المقر اللجوء سجن This time Youssef left his wife and his children in Libya الفلوس قليل جيت بروحي أنا باش انا نجي لايطاليا نخدم على حالي ونفكر انا نجيبهم من ليبيا نجيبهم معايا لايطاليا حيت ما نقدرش نديهم قارب الموت قارب الموت صعب There are many like Youssef on board many like Youssef still in Libya in Tunisia or Bangladesh and all the countries they flee from The crew tries to support them as much as they can Sono Carla Carla specializes in ethnic psychology. She studied for 11 years to become a volunteer psychologist for migrants. Her day-to-day -day job is in marketing. Quello che si fa all'inizio è proprio il primo intervento psicologico che serve a stabilizzarli proprio per evitare un disturbo post-traumatico che può avvenire nei giorni successivi, possono iniziare a subentrare flashback perché mentre migrante e immigrazione pensa all'obiettivo principale che è quello di salvarsi, l'obiettivo di arrivare e non ha tempo appunto di focalizzarsi su quello che ha vissuto. This is the last of four days on board for survivors. Today Sara, the protection officer, gives them information about their rights once in Italy and how to apply for asylum. In Europa, in Italia, ad oggi, non esiste una legge che tuteli un certo tipo di migrazione, che è la migrazione uh, di povertà, la cosiddetta migrazione economica, ma anche la migrazione climatica, cioè le persone che lasciano il proprio paese perché non possono per esempio coltivare il loro terreno per via di siccità e quindi queste persone spesso non sono tutelate e spesso ricevono un rigetto la loro richiesta d'asilo. After so many days at sea, we can finally see the coast. By tradition, the crew invites survivors to enjoy the view on the bow. Tomorrow, it will be a big day for everybody. We are in front of the port of Livorno. We are waiting for the pilot to escort us in. It's very weird to see all these ships around and to see the land after so many days at sea. It even smells different. I can't even explain. We traveled for four days across a thousand kilometers from the rescue location to the port of safety. In Europe, discussions about migrants often revolve around numbers. How many arrive? How many die? To me, they were only people carrying heavy burdens. Some have traveled for years to get to this point. Statistics say only a small number of those who arrive will manage to stay legally in Europe. Many will be sent back to square one their departure point. Humanity One is ready to leave again to rescue other migrants fleeing from poverty, wars and desperation, a never-ending cycle.